All right, I am ready to be judged. I, I'm ready, I'm ready. So escape rooms are a special challenge to me, but I love them. It's, it's an experience. So you basically pay to be put in a situation with a few different people. Some you may know, some you may not. You get stuck and where the most rewarding part is leaving. No lie, the first time someone invited me along and told me what this was about, I kind of freaked out. And I get that the idea of being locked in a room with the only way out is working with people that you might have only just met to figure out math problems, word problems. I mean, that's a lot of problems, right? All under extremely stressful situations is a sort of heartless torture, but in the right mood. I kind of love it and I think it's fun. If you've never been there, they all have a fake theme. One might be preventing a bomb that's about to go off. Another might be zombies trying to overrun you. A terrible disease is about to attack the planet. Okay, that one sounds way less fun these days, but the idea is simple. You have to get out. You have to escape. And when you do, whew, it feels amazing. I love being the first to escape. I always have, but when I was younger, the escaping looked a little different. See, I grew up in a house with passive but constant conflict. I didn't have a good relationship with my dad and my life literally felt like it was falling apart. I don't know if you've been there, but when stuff is going wrong at your house, it can really mess with you. You feel a lot of things you wish you didn't and my go-to move was to try to escape. Now, I didn't literally run away, even if it crossed my mind, but I would escape from the fighting by staying in my room for hours. I don't have those noise canceling headphones, but I knew how to turn up the volume. And when I got my driver's license, <laughs> I'd escape to my friends or any excuse to go for a drive. But at some point, I'd have to go back. I couldn't stay away forever. See, I wanted to forget the pain that I felt because my family it felt like a wreck. And for a while, it seemed like escaping was the best option. On the outside, I seemed fine. I was great. Like I got it all together and nothing bothered me ever at all. But on the inside, man, I was insecure. I was anxious. I was bitter and angry. I thought I could only feel better if I escaped my life. So I continued to find new ways to run away. I escaped with friends. I considered using some bad habits to get away. I even went through a period where I got super serious about school and work and sports and used being super busy as an excuse to escape what was going on at home. All the while, I simply counted down the days until I could literally escape by leaving home forever. Thankfully, that's not my reality now, but maybe you can relate to my story, either to having family drama or school stress or just general, I'm a human living in times of pandemics and injustice and global warming kind of stress. The reality is we're all feeling a lot these days. I heard the analogy that emotions are like getting calls on our cell phone. Sometimes they're expected, other times they're unexpected. We have the ability to answer them and connect with them. We could put them on FaceTime and focus on nothing but them. If you're braver than me, you just straight up decline them, send them to voicemail and pretend like they don't exist. <laughs> Maybe you mute them or turn off your phone and just hide it. In high school, I did that last one a lot. Emotions would call and I'd be like, uh, yeah, no, bye. <laughs> Toss the phone in my bag and just ignore it. Maybe some of you, like me in high school, bury your emotions. When something happens that you don't like, you try to escape to something else. I mean, think about it. When your parents are fighting or you're having friend drama, 
How do you typically deal with it? Do you hide your feelings because you think that showing emotion makes you feel weak? When you feel the pressure to get good grades, get into a good college, or handle your own insecurities, how do you process all of it? Maybe you escape by binge watching Netflix shows where you can be part of a different story and a life that isn't your own. Maybe you just scroll through TikTok for hours until your mind is numb. Maybe you start up a battle royale game. You ditch the squads and you just go straight for the hot drop just to get an adrenaline rush. Maybe you numb by overeating so that you don't feel your emotions or not eating at all to feel some kind of control. Maybe you take part in self-harm behaviors, hurting others or fits of rage. Maybe you quiet the noise of emotions with relationships, drinking, porn, drugs, just so we don't have to feel what's going on underneath the surface, bottled up, just ready to explode. In a word, we're coping. And for a lot of us, that means trying to numb or escape the things we don't want to feel. We look for ways to escape because we just want relief. The problem is sometimes what we do for relief ends up creating more stress. Why? Because ignoring something doesn't make that thing disappear. You know that already. You've literally experienced it. That's why today I wanna to share with you something that might actually be helpful. I mean, it's been helpful to me. And fair warning, it sounds like the worst possible idea, but stick with me because I think this can actually help us move forward and actually cope instead of getting stuck. The Bible is divided into two major parts, Old Testament, which was before Jesus came to earth, and the New Testament, which represents the time after Jesus came to earth. We're gonna look at a passage out of the book of Lamentations in the Old Testament. The name of the book comes from the word lament, which means expressing grief or mourning. It's not a word that we often use, but it's something you might feel. You might feel it if your team lost the game on the final play. Come on, you know. You'd definitely feel it if the family pet passed away. It's basically feeling sad. A whole book about being sad. See, I told you it would sound like a terrible idea, but please just stick with me, okay? The writer of Lamentations, who a lot of people believe was the prophet Jeremiah, talks about his own situation this way. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet, I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Clearly, Jeremiah is going through it. Like my boy is going through it. He says that he is bitter beyond words. We all get that. Go ahead, just think about something that has made you bitter beyond words. You've been there, right? You might even be there right now. He's hurting. It's so bad that he says he will never forget what he's feeling. This is important to pay attention to. Jeremiah doesn't downplay what's going on. He doesn't avoid it, doesn't drink it away, pretend it away, or sugarcoat what he's dealing with. He writes out his reality, as painful and real as it is. Jeremiah not only talks about the circumstances that caused his pain, but also how he felt about them. He names exactly what is going on, and he doesn't stop there. He moves from naming how he feels to naming what is true about God. He makes sure that he tells himself truth in the middle of his difficult circumstances and feelings. The kind of truth that gives him hope to push forward. I think that sometimes we will do anything to not feel all of our feelings because it hurts. So we avoid them altogether. But Jeremiah demonstrates a willingness to feel them, however bad they are. The trick is, though, to not stay there. This is important for us, too. In order to fully feel hope, we need to fully feel our other emotions, however painful they might be. So, how did Jeremiah find the strength and courage to feel his difficult emotions? Because of what he says at the end of this verse. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Now, did you catch that? 
Jeremiah recognized that there is a new start every morning. Guys, we get a fresh dose of hope, love, and promise from God. That's how we cope with fresh hope from God. God's love, faithfulness, and compassion allows us to cope with every negative experience or feeling that we have. We can't escape the pain without escaping the good stuff on the other side. His faithfulness, it doesn't change. It's new every morning. So when our pain is new, so is God's love. When our hurt is fresh, so is God's faithfulness. Because of God, we can handle whatever is causing us pain. Now, that doesn't mean you should never watch Netflix if you're sad or have an ice cream as you calm down. It just means that those don't fix anything. If we wanna get through them and not just around them, we have to feel them, knowing that there is hope on the other side. Netflix, it can't heal our pain. Drinking, it won't make the difficulty go away. Staying up all night, that doesn't fix the problem. They will help us escape temporarily, but they won't help us heal. And guys, we need to heal. When we go to quick fixes, they're like band-aids. They don't heal hurts, they simply just cover them up temporarily. They're coping strategies that never get to the heart of our hurts and the emotions that we feel. For example, when I went to pornography as a way to cope, I didn't allow myself to acknowledge and experience my difficult circumstances and feelings. As a result, I didn't find hope. And because of that, I kept going to more and more places that I shouldn't to avoid the emotions that always seem to just come back. If we wanna heal, we gotta do what Jeremiah did. First, lament. Lamenting is just naming our difficulties, saying how we feel about it, refusing to act like it's no big deal. When you lament, be specific. Say them out loud or, or write them down. And maybe most importantly, say them to God. Your heavenly father, he wants to hear, especially when you're hurting. He's not mad if you say, hey, uh, this is kind of awful, or I'm bitter beyond words. Guys, you can be honest with him. Second, name the hope. Understand that in the midst of our circumstances and feelings, there's still hope. A bad day, a bad moment, a bad couple of weeks does not equal a bad life. God always meets us on the other side. Just like we're specific about our pain, we need to name specifically what's true and where our hope is and name it over and over and over again. This is how we can begin to let our hurts heal instead of trying to escape them. As we do this hard work, because it's gonna be hard, here's what we realize. You have to feel to move forward. Take a few minutes and think about how you avoid feeling. What are you using to turn off or turn down your feelings? Is it hopping on social media, playing a bunch of video games, sleeping way too much or way too little, eating or not eating? It isn't that these things in and of themselves are bad, it's that they're being used to do something they weren't meant to do, keep us from dealing with reality. When these things are used the wrong way, They'll never accomplish what we want them to. Or maybe you find yourself engaging in self-harm, drinking, smoking, pornography, or some other thing that only you know about. In these cases, you aren't just numbing the pain. Guys, you're hurting yourself. You need to know that the additional pain you're creating doesn't erase the other pain. It doesn't make it go away. And hey, I get it, okay, like, I get it. Sometimes big pain causes us to get stuck into coping behaviors we never meant to use long term. If you're using something to numb your feelings and you aren't sure you can stop, invite other people into your life. Find a trusted friend, adult, or small group leader to help process what's going on. They can help you acknowledge what you're going through, but also they can help remind you of hope when you need it and there will come a time when we all need that reminder. For those of you sitting here wondering, why would I tell someone else my pain when I haven't even admitted it to myself? I get it. For you, I want you to ask yourself, what is getting in the way of me healing for real? 
Many of us are embarrassed, ashamed, afraid of judgment. Some of us have believed this lie that having big pain or big emotions is weakness. Opening up and sharing with others who are trustworthy will not only challenge the lies that hold you back, but can help lead you to peace and healing. If you aren't quite ready to say it out loud, I would encourage you to write it down. Then, when you're ready to share, share them with someone else. You may even want to meet with your small group leader to help you figure it out. Guys, no one should deal with the hurt from life alone. We all need each other. In fact, that's one of the biggest reasons why we have small groups. Small groups are created so that we can experience life together and all of life, not just the highlights. So if you aren't sure who to talk to, we encourage you to start with your small group leader or maybe your pastor. Hey, you don't even have to look them in the eye. Just text them one or two words, letting them know you're up for a conversation. They won't make it weird and you'll be glad you did. I believe that we can't escape what we feel. We can numb it for a little while, but eventually we have to feel to move forward towards the big, abundant, joy-filled, better than you can think is possible right now life that God wants for us.